Bang. Bang. Needs knives. I'm Jared with my buddy Ryan. Hello everybody. And today we are talking about how to get into customs, where to start, and who to start with, where do you go. I'm definitely not the guy to, to really talk about that, but Ryan is. Let's have a chat. So let's talk about it. All right, everybody. Figure, uh, let's talk a little bit today about the custom knife world and how you can kind of get involved if you've been in the knife community at large and, and into productions and haven't quite crossed into the realm of full handmade or um, part CNC and part handmade customs. So first off, let me say that this journey of knife collecting and or using and enjoying the hobby changes for everybody. Um, and it's different and at a different pace for everybody. And your budget might allow for a different uh, um, way that you're able to collect and, and obtain, um, buy and sell and trade um, knives uh, over the years that you're in this hobby. Um, but what I wanted to kind of talk about is part one, if you will, which is kind of getting over the cusp of, you know, the four or $500 Riot Chris Reeve Hinderer um, Strider kind of, you know, arena or benchmark of productions because there's a lot of high-end productions that are excellent, excellent knives and excellent, um, and you could stop there and be very content, right. um, you know, but for a lot of people, um, myself included, I find a lot of my enjoyment and pleasure in knife collecting, sorry for the wind, comes from um, the artisan, the craftsman, and the handwork that goes into a product. The line is a little blurred um, between production and mid-tech and custom. In my eyes, a custom um, really infers a certain amount of time invested into a particular piece. Um, and, you know, by hand, uh, essentially. Um, and so a custom knife could include a lot of parts that are done by CNC, for instance. This is a, a really cool entry piece. This is a Nick Chuprin Imp. Um, this is a custom model. Sorry for the little bit of fuzz on there. This is a custom knife, or what I would consider a custom knife, but it is done primarily on CNC, and he has a couple of options on these if you go on his website. He may still have some available now, but this is a hand ground blade on an all CNC milled couple of handles. So on this side, it's, it's blasted carbon fiber, so it has really nice texture. You could see that he did a custom anna, uh, anna work on the on the screws and the hardware. Let's see if we can get it into. So how picture. many do you think? Like so, how many pieces do you think he would make of something like this? I would assume he does them in small batches, probably between five and ten at a time. Um, okay. If I was to guess, um, again, this one has a hand ground blade, but he also sells variants of this at fifty dollars less. This one is, I think. Uh, 350 or 400 okay. and then the CNC blade variants are $50 less than these but you get a lot of hand finish work on this too um, this has a stone washed and anodized um, lock scale with milled holes and polished uh, polished bowls on the inside it has you know multicolored anodized hardware screws um, and a multi finished blade right where part of it is hand ground and part of it is done in an acid wash so now so, this same and then guy, you have orange peel on the clip so now this same guy does he do like for somebody that wants like a larger knife yes um he does the mk1 the mk1 uh, yeah and which then can, the mk1 is i'll drop in a picture guys The MK1 is awesome, and I have owned those in the past. I don't have one right now. Um, and he's collaborated on the MK1 with Robert Carter and done the MK1 RC. That I um, have also owned in the past. And it's a full size, okay, uh, a regular size folder nice. with um, a, a little over three inch blade. And gotcha. um, it's awesome. But this is a really cool coin pouch carry that won't break the bank at 350, 400 bucks, 
but is yeah. truly uh, made by a custom maker and sold on his website, um, Nick Chupra Knives. You can look it up and, and go there, or Jared can link it. Yep. But you get some of the really fine touches, like the orange peel right. on that yeah, clip yeah, yeah, is really sure. cool. And it's a really nice piece to have uh, oh, come on. in your coin pouch yeah, or as a backup or second knife on your person. That is really nice. Sorry for the wind. All right, next up. So here's here? another one where, I mean, there's a little bit of machining that's going to be done on these, or um, I believe he uses a water jet. This is Jens Anso. A lot of custom finish work on this piece. This is his Monte Carlo model, um, and there is a production variant of this done by ZT. I don't remember the model number. Yeah, but, I know what you're talking about, though. Uh, Um, but the Monte Carlo is an entry into his custom world. Um, it is a double detent, I should say even a triple detent. Uh, it has a half stop detent and then it has a closed detent, all of which are really nice and firm. And the way he does that is he's got uh, titanium liners inset into these scales that have detents that pinch the blades and then there's stops in the blade that hit those de different detents and there's no lash no movement inside each of those detents so it's incredibly crispy with a lot of hand work that goes into it like the hand satin blade for instance um, and then this one has a beautiful laser engraving oh, yeah. done on the handle scales this one in in this iteration is a four of 12 he did 12 of these this is number four um, but you can find his Monte Carlos um, there might even be some hanging out on blade HQ or knife center um, I think there was even one on like not EDC foundry but something you know maybe it was on EDC foundry but you can look around and find a couple of these um, he also opens his order books every now and again so you can actually order to your specifications I know he just opened his orders on a couple of his models uh, this one is um, about in price range. Uh, I think they start around 700 okay. and go upwards from there depending on the materials they use. So with the feeling of like opening and closing it, it's much different than a regular slip joint. I mean, yeah. this yeah, much more of it's like... It's a very modern interpretation it's, of, it's of got, it. It's got like a strong detent in a good way though. Yeah. And then it comes out and then it's very smooth to this to the first um, stop. Yep. And then from there, that's pretty soft. It's not really strong, but it definitely stops you. And then the lockup. It's, it's pretty clicky. It feels really mechanical and smooth at the same time. Sure. And for the price point, I, I don't think, I think this is tough to beat. You're getting hand satin RWL 34 blade, really nice laser engraving. This iteration, I think, was 800 or 850 bucks. Um, and, you know, the, the 3D milled pocket clip is awesome and incredibly functional. So for a beautiful gents piece that has all the hand touches that you would really ever want, um, you know, at about an $800 price tag, um, this is a winner, no doubt about it, and a great entry point. Definitely. Next so, up. next real quick, we'll talk about the Ed Cope. Ed Cope is a maker out of Hawaii. Um, he's a, uh, he was a Army Ranger in the 2nd Battalion, I think the 2nd Battalion 75th Ranger Regiment, um, and um, was a helicopter pilot. Um, and he still flies helicopters, but he also makes some of the best knives around. Um, he was taught by Tom Mayo. So that's another avenue you can go through is finding the apprentices to a lot of the great master makers yeah. out there. Um, so, so people that were basically taught by the greats so that you know they're doing good work, yes. but they might be easier to get pieces from. And a whole lot less expensive. Right. You know, right. a Tom Mayo would be $2,000 and this is 800 to $1,000. Big difference half the price yeah so um, you know and to me this has everything I want even collecting stuff that's two or three grand that I get out of this the detent is perfect and it's perfectly tuned and he does it all by hand there's no CNC or no water jetting or anything done everything on this is done by hand let me ask you this how what's like the rate of speed that these guys go up like um like with um not with quality or anything like that, but with pricing and how fast like people start getting their attention to them, and then like it winds up becoming a really sought after piece. Like say sure. if somebody bought it, right? Um, yep. The chances of them 
being able to uh, to have a piece from somebody yeah. who now all some months later is harder to get from because of the popularity and stuff like that. Is that pretty common for um, some of these guys? That time frame varies greatly depending on the maker and um, and kind of their style. Some people who are custom makers are also tremendous business people right. um, who really get themselves out there and spread the word and are represent themselves incredibly well and are kind of louder in the community yeah and because of that um, you know can take off a lot faster yeah. than others so others are quiet an, and reserved and yeah. um, and you know some can be an investment piece and then some maybe not so much yeah depends. just the time frame of how fast somebody can take off varies based right. on their personality and who they are and right right quality of craftsmanship but it's you you know, I was just talking about, for instance, um, SDK. This dude makes incredible stuff. This is a great option. Um, yeah. And hit hit up Steve um, on um, Instagram. This is SDK Nova Blades. Yep. And he's got some work I think that uh, is is available. Hit him up. See what he's got. This one's the javelin. This is the javelin model. Yeah. But um, fit and finish and quality on this is top notch. Truly top yeah, notch. The grinds are detents insane. awesome. Grinds are really done, really done well. They're very even. The plunge grinds are very even. Um, access to the lock bar is tremendous, and it's very easy to engage and disengage. Definitely. The material use, the micarta is top quality on the backspacer and the handles. Um, the clip is really nicely done with hidden hardware, and the thumb studs work great. So you've got a, another option. You know, this is someone who hasn't quite taken off yet. El Ed Cope. Is starting to, but you, you've got opportunity there. Follow him on Instagram and things pop up first come, first serve. These guys on the secondary market, too, yeah. they're maybe a little cheaper. Yep. So people yep. got an opportunity to get a custom piece on the secondary market, maybe a little cheaper than on the table price. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Until they blow up, if you will, uh, you know, they're, they're going to maintain kind of a modest number, right? Um, I'll use an example. This Shamwari... Um, I think table price is probably 750 to 850 dollars. Um, secondary market on these is, you know, probably more like 1,400 dollars. Right, right, right. So it's almost double because of the, the you know, notoriety yeah. from being around a little while and uh, and people knowing the quality and wanting the work. Okay, guys, this is just an inserted clip of Gavco knives. Ryan said I should definitely put them in here it's a great place to start off when wanting to get into customs they go for about seven or they start off about seven to eight hundred dollars obviously sky is the limit it's usually first come first serve you can also find them on blade hq and a bunch of other places so gavco knives so if you go after some of these guys who are kind of coming up you've got opportunity I'll mention another area that people could get into, and that's in South African. South African makers. Here are two beautiful examples of Trevor Berger. Trevor Berger Customs vary in price. His base, t um, he does two sizes, the EXK and the LEXK. These are both LEXK, which are the larger format models. Um, and these are both his plus models, which means they're liner locks. Um, but he also does a CFL and an SFL, which are flame lock, frame lock variants. Right. Those frame lock variants start at about $680, $650, $680, and go up to, you know, th these are more like, you know, the $850 range yeah. on the liner locks, and depending on materials, they'll change. Yeah. So, and I have to say, this is the like the best front flipper I've ever felt. He's the king life. of front flippers. Yeah, These are the best front flippers so smooth. in the market, in my opinion, are Trevor Burgers. Yeah. So this would be a great way to go. South African makers, though, in general, offer extreme value because our dollar goes a lot longer, a lot further in South Africa than it does here. So you've got a lot of opportunity to seek those out. Another one that I would highly recommend people look at, and I don't have one here. We'll put a picture on. Is Andre Thorburn. Andre Thorburn is really the king of the modern detent. Okay. Um, so for flippers, I, in my opinion, he's one of the top three producers, top two, maybe top one of flipper variant He's knives South period. African? Yeah. Okay. Um, and he does beautiful work. His wife and him are both involved. 
he can and they get dressed up or dressed down depending on what you're after um but there's oh, extreme value this. in but, andre thorburn so you know to, to me he's the the tom mayo of uh of south african knives so a lot of opportunity there are there some other south african makers that uh sure that you can name i can maybe throw yep. in some pictures um, on steam camps um, so Cozy Steen Camp, Willem Steen Camp um, are some really, really good ones. Trevor Berger, of course, I mentioned. Um, this is so smooth. Um, Andre Thorburn, of course. Um, Blomerus is another one. Okay. Um, and Blumerus was a student of Thorburn. Okay, okay. So, there you know, like you were saying before. Exactly. So, there's a lot of opportunity there as well. So, South African makers, a lot of, I'll put a plug in for Blade, uh, Blade Gallery. Yeah. Bladegallery.com is a great resource for South African makers. They've got a lot of the Steen Camps, uh, Trevor Burgers, when, you know, they're the ones that get most of the stuff. They always have a good flow of Andre Thorburn. And there's some killer Thorburns on there right now at a great price. Yeah. And nobody will be disappointed in those. They're incredible. So, um, and then okay. I'll also talk about this real briefly. This is um, this is one that kind of they, they lose kind of secondary value versus primary market. So if you buy these new, this is a Marfion Custom Socom Elite. Um, with stingray leather insert inlays and uh, and a compound ground M390 blade um, with kind of a dual finish on it with satin flats and stone washed primary grinds. So on this one, you know, I think I bought this for 1,200 bucks new, and you know, I would assume the secondary market on these is probably more like 800 dollars. Okay. You know, so so this or is something to look that. for in the secondary so market. This is something that you could take advantage of and enter into a custom arena with a, a custom ground blade, right? Production handle with some you know custom inlay work. Yeah. Um, you know, at a a much more reasonable rate. So I guess what I'm saying is there's a lot of opportunity. Here's another example, right? This is kind of a CNC piece, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So to get into customs from the world of Laconic Arius, this would be the next place to go. Or yeah. an Arno Bernard is another South okay. African maker who does um, CNC handlework and Say all custom blades again? and custom inlays. Arno, Arno, Arno Bernard. Okay. Is another. That's one. The he has um, some beautiful Orca models in stock at Blade Gallery. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So take a look at those because they're. If anybody likes a Koenig Arius and wants to get into customs, that's a really great gateway. Oh, right. Um, in fact, the guy who I'm about to mail this Trevor Berger off to, who's going to absolutely adore it. Um, he uh, Smitty. I can't remember the four digits. But Smitty on Instagram. Um, he bought my my Arno Bernard Orca, and that was his gateway drug okay. into a lot there of other go. customs. So, um, but the Skiff, this is the Drifter, right? Yeah. Yep. So this Skiff made Drifter is another way um, to get into it because this is a CNC done piece that is probably what seven hundred fifty. Yes, between seven seven fifty and eight fifty. Yep. yep. Uh, so depending again, on whether or not same... you have standoffs or the backspacer. Okay, so in that same ballpark, this one has a backspacer, so I guess it's probably 850. A little bit more, so yeah. yeah. But, um, but this is another way to get into it. Something else Jared and I were talking about over a little lunch earlier was the fact that people can also mod. Um, and, and like Skiff, for instance, if you go on their website, they sell their bearings that yeah. you could install into, if you go to measure your bearings in other knives, you can install their bearings in right. them. Right, so you or get you, custom bearings right. in your knife, or whatever knife you do like. For the, uh, this, Trevor Berger is not the original scales. There you go. Right, he he had this custom done, and yeah. this micarta is terrific, yeah. um, and it turned out great. Right. So, um, and I'm sure they did the anno work on here as well. So, you know, this is an aftermarket modded version that looks incredibly well done. Make it And there own. are guys like that, like, um, Razor's Edge Knives, Josh at Razor's Edge Knives, for instance, does some of that mod work. I don't know if he's available now to do it, but um, 
You can but there's also some, get, a lot of reputable guys yeah. out there though. And you can buy clips from Rip's Garage Tech or yeah. or um, a Adam Purvis or whatever and, and make, and I don't have one here, but um, you know, that would be another way to enter into a middle ground to get into these entry tier. Yeah. I hate to call them entry tier customs because they're they're not they're they're as good as anything else out there. Um, but price point wise, you've got an advantage over spending two thousand dollars like some of these Jonas Iglesias Definitely. or Gareth Bowles or uh, Cody Utzler. You know, uh, and I can I see the 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 SoCom really quick? Yeah. And the difference between this SoCom, the feeling of the custom the marfion custom versus just the regular production socom it does feel a lot different the detent is more fine-tuned and the uh the lock bar is smoother so there are a lot of differences and it's definitely in the action and the fit and finish it definitely feels a lot different than a regular you know socom but if you if you don't want to step into this type of market they do have the regular production one all right guys i just wanted to show these really quick i'm inserting this clip because you know these ones these three right here would be considered a production knives but they do have a lot of hand finish work and it's also a good place to start you know when you're wanting to get into customs so this has a lot of hand finish work it's hand ground this is the medford smooth criminal button lock very smooth this is the medford heiress and you know great fit and finish you know really good quality and you can tell a hand ground blade um this is the Sabenza 31. A lot of people do start with these. These are production, but you know, they still have, you know, some uh, some hand finish work and you know, they're considered a little bit more of an upper tier of quality. Now, this is a custom. This is made by Quest Customs. This is the Quest Custom Warncliffe Gent. So, they do have other models and other knives but this is a really good price point these things go for like 500 bucks i think between like five and six hundred dollars but you know considering what you're getting you're getting a full-size knife titanium s35 vn hand ground blade you can tell it's got a hand finished satin um it's got carbon fiber inlays and yeah the quality's there and um, the price point is really really nice and they have you know really nice blade geometry so there you guys go. I just wanted to insert this little clip in of a couple more. And I guess something you know we're talking about too is where value comes into customs. Um, and Two this minutes. could be a whole different conversation. So maybe yeah. we'll save it for a later video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, um, um, I think that's probably a good <clears throat> idea where we talk about the intricacies that go into making a custom a custom. Yeah. Um, and what advantages I guess there are in, uh, in fitment and finish work and in detail. All right, guys, there you guys go. It's kind of a, a way to get into customs and, you know, like kind of how to stair step your way into them and some of the people to look for. Ray Laconico, too. Ray Laconico, yeah, that's definitely another one. Follow him. Follow him uh, on Instagram. Occasionally he'll put one up for sale and it'll be. 750 850 yeah. bucks and some of these guys might be a lot more easier to get some of their pieces or maybe be able to get some of their pieces on the secondary market and stuff yeah. like that so definitely check these guys out all right guys peace